NASCAR Senior Vice President of Competition Elton Sawyer is backtracking on the comments he made following the race at Richmond Raceway where they he declared and NASCAR declared that they found no problems with the final restart that saw Denny Hamlin jump the gun, beat Martin Truex Jr., beat Joey Logano, beat Kyle Larson, and claim the win. Before we get to this, I'd like to ask you, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos here at John Trent Racing. Let's listen to what Elton Sawyer told the media following the race at Richmond. This is over on Bob Pockers' social media account on X. This is what Elton Sawyer had to say about that final restart. Yeah, we, we like reviewed review Yeah, we reviewed that. We looked at it. Um, obviously, the 11 was the control vehicle. It was awful close, but uh, we deemed it to be a good good restart. So there you go. He said it was awful close, but the NASCAR deemed it to be a good restart. If you, if you look at the actual restart, you can clearly see that Hamlin jumped the gun. They have to get to this white line. That is when they're allowed to go. That's when the restart zone uh, begins. And you will see that Hamlin goes before he gets to the restart zone. Let's take a look. So you can see right there, Hamlin is uh, almost half a car length ahead of Martin Truex Jr. And they are still not at the line. He clearly has launched early. Um, and I think it's very clear even from this, but we have even better angles here. If we look at the in-car camera, this is from Martin Truex Jr.'s car. Still not at the line. There you go. And you even hear Martin Truex Jr. say he went early almost immediately. I don't know if that radio is synced up to when uh, Truex, uh, when Denny Hamlin actually goes there. But you can see that Hamlin did indeed go early on there. And then here is the in-car from Denny Hamlin. And pay attention to the white line on the racetrack. You will see and hear that Denny Hamlin accelerates before he gets to that line. So you right there, you heard him accelerate, and then you see the white line as it goes by. Uh, he obviously did indeed jump early. So this is now what Elton Sawyer is saying. He's saying, he said this to Sirius XM NASCAR radio channel 90 uh, earlier this morning. He has completely changed his tune saying that Denny Hamlin did indeed roll early, but because they are a live event, what are we supposed to do? I mean, what an absolute garbage comment. I mean, talk about just throwing your entire uh, organization under the bus and, and, and revealing that you are incompetent. I mean, wow. Uh, well, let's let's listen here. It's a bang bang call, Mike. And as uh, I had the opportunity to look, uh, you know, Sunday night as well as multiple times yesterday. Um, first and foremost, you know, the eleven is the control vehicle. They have they have earned the right to be in that position. They've they've won the battle off pit road. They put themselves in a position to be able to control the restart. And as I so let's address that. I don't think anyone is disputing that Denny Hamlin is the control car. Sure, he is allowed to go uh, first, right? That is the rule. But he's not allowed to go before he gets to the restart line. That's the rule. That that That's the rule. Um, so I don't know why he's trying to say, like, let me get this straight. Denny Hamlin is the one who is the control car. Like, yes, we realize that. No one is disputing that. I don't really see why you are trying to bring that up as if that's some kind of justification for you missing the call. Nevertheless, let's continue. They looked at it yesterday, again, multiple times. There, there's no doubt he, he rolled early. Um, and, you know, again. It's so he makes it very clear there. There is no doubt that he rolled early. That is very different. Uh, from what he said following the race where he says it, he, they, I forget the exact quote. I mean, I just listened to it, but he basically says like it was a good restart, but now he's saying he did indeed roll early, which indicates that it was not a good restart. It's a bang, bang call. It's at the end of the race. Um, you know, we're a live sporting event. We're, we don't have the um, luxury of a timeout and, and go to the sideline and review it and make that call. Um, if this happens at lap 10 or 50 or 
300, um, you know, the, the call could have been different. So, uh, so that is damning too. He is literally admitting that if it was not the end of the race, they probably would have made a different call. No consistency. That is what you need when you are being an official, when you are officiating something, when you are uh, enforcing the rules, you need to be consistent. And he is admitting that NASCAR is not consistent and they make decisions based on when they are at in the race. That is unacceptable. I'm sorry. That is absolutely unacceptable. The fact that he's even admitting this is embarrassing. Um, I mean, at least he is admitting it. He's being honest. I will give him credit for that. But wow, just I, I'm really shocked that they are admitting that they have no consistency here. Uh, truly, truly just I, it's embarrassing. It is truly embarrassing. And the fact that they can't review this, they could. I did it <laughs> after the race. I have a video up here that you can watch on the channel where I did it immediately after the race. There were people on social media that were looking at it immediately after the race. The Fox News broadcast showed the replay that I just shared with you uh, immediately after the race. It is not hard for them to be like, okay, we looked at it. We're going to go back, re-rack, and let's go. I mean, it's really not that hard to do that. They had two laps to look at it. They should have had someone doing that. You see this all the time in local short track racing. I watch the Cars Tour. I watch Lucas Oil 8 Mile Dirt Series. I watch uh, World of Outlaws. You see that they will, uh, uh, maybe they might go a lap or whatever, but they will say, like, that was a bad restart. We need to start it. A lot of times, they figure it out right away. And NASCAR should have figured it out right away. I'm betting that they did have it figured out right away, but they chose to ignore it. But let's continue here and listen on what else he has to say. Um, I wouldn't, if I'm a competitor, I wouldn't be playing that game every week. Uh, sometimes you get the call that goes in your favor and and so, obviously, he goes on to say, like, you probably shouldn't be doing that every week, but, uh, and then sometimes you get it in your favor and sometimes you don't. It's like, dude, you literally just gave all the drivers permission to jump the last restart of the race. I mean, you, you, that's what you said. So, I don't know why you're going to try and walk that back when that is something that you just informed all of the drivers that we are going to allow people to jump the restart on the final restart of the race, especially if we're in NASCAR over time or if it's maybe like less than 10 laps to go so i mean he's got himself in a giant giant mess and it's a mess of his own making no one forced him to come out and and say this stuff i mean he said it uh i think it probably would have been better for nascar to come out and say like uh we missed that one but we should have got it we will get it next time instead he's basically saying like oh well uh, we probably did see that, but if it was uh, earlier in the race, we would have called it. But since it was at the end of the race, we're not going to call it. I mean, uh, this is just unacceptable. Elton Sawyer and NASCAR need to get there, uh, get it together. They need to get it together, figure this out, and uh, make it so that they are consistently calling these races throughout the entire race. And uh, I think they need to have some kind of of protocol when they are looking at late race restarts when they're in NASCAR over time and you have these rules and how they should be enforcing them. Uh, I, I get that they, they're up against uh, broadcast deals and stuff like that, but uh, I think for the integrity of the sport, they, they need to get this stuff in place. They need to have these protocols in place and uh, really figure it out. And based on what he's saying here, it's, I think it's clear that they don't have it. Um, but as, as for whether it actually affected the outcome of the race, I don't think it did. I think Denny Hamlin still goes on to win this race. He probably still beats Martin Truex Jr., even uh, jumping the restart there. I think he probably uses him up as he did in turn one, uh, pushes Martin up the track, and uh, goes on to win it. Uh, I think that is indeed what happens. I mean, obviously, there's a possibility that Martin's able to really pin him down and uh, get a good run on the outside, but I just don't think that uh, Denny would have really let that happen. He probably would have pushed Martin up the track, made him go really wide, and maybe you have a situation where Logano is able to get in there and dive underneath and create a three-wide thing, and you get some really good excitement on that, but uh, I, I feel like what happened... Uh, was going to happen whether or not Denny jumped the restart. But I do think that uh, 
NASCAR needs to get their protocols in order. Uh, and I think they just need to do a better job on how they manage uh, late race restarts. And uh, when it comes to jumping the restart line, there's a reason why they have the restart zone. If they don't want a restart zone, then they shouldn't have a restart zone uh, and they should change their rules. Uh, but uh, I think they need to um, enforce this rule and not have uh, inconsistency as they're saying that they do. Um, throughout uh, the races, depending on where they are at in the race. But let me know what you guys make of this. Let me know in the comments below.